Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Professor. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, Melody. Hi, how's everybody else? I see uh, three people here, Matthews and Rowan. And uh, let's see how many are in our forum. Um, yeah. Uh, we have also Alin and Usman. Uh, hope they are going to uh, join us shortly. All righty. Um, Rowan, it looks like you didn't, you know, sign into uh, today's forum, right? That's something you have to do the first thing. I just submitted it. Uh, you just did. Okay. Yes. I, you know, I just noticed. All righty. Um, so uh, 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 just uh, two things I would like to uh, mention before we uh, start. Um, you all understand from uh, next Monday, um, next Monday will be the 28th. Uh, we, we return to the uh, in-person mode, right? In person. So, and the second thing is that the, um, uh, the quiz one uh, summary statistics is posted, right? In the assignments folder, right? Uh, Quiz one summary stats, right? Uh, with attendance as of uh, 22nd, which was yesterday. Okay, so please check it out. Um, all right, so um, uh, so in our last class, we um, uh, basically we discussed, you know, how the formula for R is derived, right? The last thing we did was, you know, basically uh, uh, how, uh, before we do, okay. So starting with the base formula for future value, right? Uh, uh, right? The second, which is basically, you know, uh, a compounding formula, right? The second formula that can be derived from this is the present value formula, or present value formula or principle, right? Which is just the reverse process, just the reverse process of compounding. And this process is called discounting, right? Um, and in future uh, compounding, future value is the unknown, but of course everything in the left-hand side is the unknown. In the uh, discounting uh, principle or the present value is the unknown. And uh, the third equation that can come out of this is, you know, uh, R, right? If R is the unknown, right? So uh, this formula is something you already know from topic one. Uh, again, the reason we are, you know, uh, the, the reason I'm showing you all the steps of derivation is to uh, show you, to make you understand that these formulas are all interconnected. They are related, they, are, they don't exist in separation, right? They are all uh, basically the same formula, but just solved for different unknowns, right? And if you understand this, you don't have to memorize anything. You can basically know um, the only thing you need to uh, memorize is this. And this doesn't, you don't even need to memorize this if you know why it is like this, why it is, you know, uh, why compounding is like that. And then the rest of them are all just, you know, um, um, all just, you know, uh, uh, derived, derived 
from the uh, uh, base formula, right? And this is important because understanding that they are, you know, um, interconnected, uh, that's important because in, in general, no textbooks, no textbooks tell you, uh, no textbooks show you how they are connected and how these formulas are derived. They just give you, they just dish out this, you know, uh, final forms, right? They just dish, dish out the final forms to you and then, you know, tell you this is the formula for R, this is the formula for PV, and you memorize it. Now think about it. This is something, you know, um, that happens. This is something that recurs. It's recurring every semester. For all those, you know, 20 plus years that I've been teaching, you know, um, economics and finance, every semester, some students always come up, you know, asking me, you know, professor, do I need to memorize all these formulas? All these, do I need to memorize? Memorize. Why do you memorize? Why do you think you have to memorize? Why don't you, why don't you think about finding the system here, right? The system that, you know, integrates everything. If you understand the mathematical reasoning behind it, right? You can derive all the formulas from the base formula and even the base formula in topic one, I showed you how, why it, um, boils down to uh, this form, right? So it's something, um, so if you understand and if you're capable of deriving all the, you know, mathematical process, if you can do the uh, mathematical process, then you can derive all these formulas. And that's the reason I'm showing you all the steps of derivation. And as far as I know, there is no textbook that shows you these processes right steps of derivation and no no class no professors no professor at least on undergrad level teaches how these formulas are related maybe on graduate level then you know uh, but think about it the point is um so that you don't have to memorize all of these you think you know you need to memorize if you think you have to memorize that, all of that, that's, you know, that starts to become an onerous job. I mean, of course, you can memorize, you know, uh, uh, you may be able to memorize, uh, but for a while. I mean, your memory can be retained for one semester, but after the semester is over, then you'll forget as, you know, quickly as, you know, um, uh, the goldfish, you know, forgets, you know, what happened three seconds ago. Because if you don't repeat it, if you don't, you know, uh, practice it, it's only natural that you will forget. But even if you forget, if you know the uh, logic behind it, the mathematical logic behind it, you can derive them all. So now uh, we have the fourth one left, right? Fourth. I, I, I. And the fourth variable is, uh, of course, then n. What if n is the unknown? How do we solve for it? But before we do that, uh, let's uh, refresh your memory. Let's refresh your memory. Uh, uh, first of all, I told you, uh, I showed you uh, last time, uh, I told you to study this, right? Because this, these are basically, you know, uh, 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 the fundamental uh, characteristics of the power functions, right? The exponents. Um, so why? Uh, first of all, we uh, last time we uh, talked about basically, you know, what is, you know, uh, uh, x to the negative n, right? Uh, and we know that's the reciprocal. That means, you know, uh, 
1 over x to the n. Okay. And then a couple of things, you know, we already know uh, x raised to a times x raised to b is x raised to a plus b, right? And just the same, then if it is x over x uh, to the to the a over x to the b, then it's x to the a minus b. And you know, uh, you understand why minus b x to minus b, uh, why is it x minus to minus b? Because x raised to n, negative n, is 1 over um, 1 over uh, x to the n. And then uh, also um, uh, next one is what? another thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, And we also know um, x to the a raised to b is x, right, uh, to a times b. And that's the uh, properties that we used, right? That's the properties, you know, that we used last time, right? Uh, because of this, we could, because of this, we could, you know, uh, We could, you know, uh, do this, and then also um, and x to the a over x to no 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 not that um, what was I what. Did I wanna? Okay, uh, so um, uh, when the base are different, right? Uh, when the base is different, in this case, it's you know a to the c times b to the c. But you know, uh, base is different, but the uh, exponents are the same. Then it's a times b uh, raised to c. I mean, you know. Uh, you can do a simple experiment, you know, like try, you know, uh, two squared times three squared, right? You can simply do that, you know, um, uh, try that, right? So in other words, x to the a, that, uh, y times y to a and it's x times y raised to a just try that you know two squared times you know three squared right which is you know um then think about it um four times nine right and then it's easily you know uh you can tell uh, yeah. 36, which is, you know, what? 6 to the um, 6 squared, right? So basically the same thing. And uh, just a little, little, you know, thought experiment with that. Uh, again, uh, quotient property, different uh different base but you know uh, uh different base but same exponent right just not that uh power of power that's what we used right that's what we used power of power and uh rational exponent you know it's basically ratio one over uh, a to uh, one over b um uh, is you know um uh, well, uh, that's what I already showed you, you know, um, 
basically, you know, uh, uh, it's the square, you know, uh, radical, radical, right? Uh, and then uh, A raised to C over B is, you know, uh, uh, a beth radical of A to the uh, uh, A raised to C, right? So we can go over, you know, uh, each example. But what's, what's interesting is, you know, uh, uh, is we all know, we all know uh, anything raised to zero is one, but why? You just memorized it. But think about it. Um, what would make, you know, the exponent zero? If you do X raised to A, times x raised to negative a, uh, we know it is x to the a times 1 over x to the a, right? Because this is you know, uh, uh, reciprocal. And then they cancel out. If it cancel out, it becomes 1. And the exponent by exponents alone, right? Same base, different exponents. You just you know, uh, add them up. And you know uh, it's. Uh, subtract it because it's negative, right? The second one is negative, right? So it will become zero. That's why anything raised to zero is one. In other words, you don't have to memorize. You can just, you can just plug in a few numbers and you will see for yourself. You can see for yourself, right? So it's, a, you know, it's important to, um, uh, Verify by your, you know, uh, verify for yourself. Don't just, you know, don't just let it, you know, uh, uh, there's, you know, if you see a table of values, you know, why, uh, and those tables must make sense. I mean, uh, lots of times they uh, present uh, some table, I mean, um, but a lot of students just think, you know, uh, uh, that must be okay. That must be right because if it is wrong, they wouldn't um, use it there. You know. Uh, no, how? But you know you have to you have to verify if they make sense. You know, let me just show you what I'm uh, talking about. It's another class, but you know, different course, right? Minus the end. For example, right? When you, you know, uh, as you study, you know, as you continue to study and uh, as you go, you know, uh, to uh, uh, advanced courses, right, you will run into a lot of, you know, uh, uh, um, you will run into a lot of, you know, uh, uh, statistics. In other words, the, the table with, you know, um, certain uh, statistics, you know, uh, and the authors are pr uh, presenting those statistics to prove their point. And then, you know, you think, oh, well, uh, that's, too comp that's too complicated. You know, that must be right. I mean, I'll just, you know, uh, skip that. And, you know, um, uh, because even the verbiage alone is too already to honor us. I mean, reading, uh, reading the verbiage, oh, yeah. It, it, but, you know, if you are a very, you know, uh, insightful person, I mean, um, of course, you know, the insight doesn't, cannot, it, it cannot come from someone who is not uh, learned. Um, uh, you have to have basically, you know, uh, a deep, in-depth, in-depth in training to have the insight. But re the verbiage is, you know, uh, but sometimes a lot of, you know, um, <clears throat> just frail, you know, and even by... Um, so it cannot, but you learn a lot by trying to crack the, uh, 
uh, by by cracking the data. So for example, these something like these tables, you know, you just skip. But I never skip something like this. I analyze those, you know, uh, tables and uh, make sure that they are they make sense. If these are just a bunch of numbers they just cooked up, then they won't make sense. But it has to make sense, you know, the whole so you must have the the understanding of the whole context. Otherwise, you can't make, you know, but then um, uh, it doesn't come easy, you know, it doesn't, obviously, it comes, you know, uh, clearly, it comes at, you know, uh, It comes at great expense. Of course, the great expense, great expense is your your sacrifice. Sacrifice is what? I mean, as a student, your sacrifice is your uh, your time and effort. And without without giving your time and effort, and of course, brain power, you can't achieve. You, know, you can't achieve. You know. Um, uh, you can't achieve enlighten, enlightenment. You can't achieve enlightenment, right? Or, you know, a higher level of light. You can't. You know, you have to give your, you know, time and effort. Now, so, um, so that is basically, you know, uh, what, you know, um, uh, the knowledge about or, understanding of uh, power functions can do for you and then to make you know um, uh, that will help you understand you know uh, the connection between the uh, uh, different equations different formulas why they have to be like now let's think about n this time how do we solve that's possible you know uh, we all know uh, Oh, well, the principle is 10K. If you put that, and your, you have a target future value. Your target future value is 50K. And if the uh, interest rate is 10%, right? Uh, this interest rate, of course, APR. Uh, Isn't it obvious, you know, what is missing? Huh? So the question is, how many years will it take, right? How many years will it take? What's going to be the end? How many years will it take, right? So that's quite plausible, right? So how do we solve for N then? How do we solve for it? So, um, <clears throat> Okay, I have already used this space like this, so I'll have to. Uh... All right. So then, you know, first, you know, of course, we will always have to start with the uh, base formula, which is this. And of course, you know, uh, this is the padlock. Uh, because of this n, um, uh, but, you know, our question is, this is the uh, unknown this time. This n is the unknown. So how can we, we need to isolate N, but how do we isolate N? Uh, I mean, what we can isolate is first, you know, um, uh, what we can do um, immediately is isolating this term, right? 
because n cannot be detached from 1 plus r because it's the uh, padlock on the cage, right? So if the cage goes, the padlock goes too, right? If you move the cage to another place, right, the, uh, the padlock goes with it. So what we can isolate first is basically, you know, um, the cage from, you know, the whole thing. So to do that, we, you know, of course, then divide both both sides by um, P. The right hand, uh, le left hand side will be like this. The right hand side, we will have only this left. And then here's our dilemma. Okay, uh, uh, why? Uh, because the key to solving any equation the key to solving an equation, I've been telling you over and over, the key to solving an equation is by identifying uh, what? Z equals X times Y structure. Key to solving any equation is, right? And then you can, uh, if X is the unknown, right? Then, you know, well, we know X is Z over Y. We can do this, but then if y is the uh, uh, unknown, then y equals z over x. But then here's the problem. Is Does this look like z equals x times y? Hmm? Does this look, look like that? Is there any way we can identify this as z equals x times y? No, this is z. This is x, but not times y, but it's more like z equals x raised to the y. It's like z equals x raised to y. And y is the unknown. That's, the, that's our problem. So then how do we solve this? Well, uh, to solve this, the only way we can solve this is by using uh, log. And what is log? Log is, you know, uh, short for logarithm, right? Log, logarithm, right? And logarithm is nothing but, you know, expressing a large number by the exponent of the base, right? Um, so uh, the most, uh, there are basically, you know, uh, three Three most commonly used log logs, three types of logarithms commonly used. Uh, first, it's called common log, right? Common log is basically log uh, using 10 as the base. Uh, so as an example, we already know 100 is 10 squared, right? 1,000, 10 cubed, right? 10,000, 10 to the fourth, right? And if you keep going like this, right? Um, One million, right? Ten to the sixth, right? Now, think about it. One um, instead of you know putting a lot of zeros, we can use you know um, uh, exponent, right? Uh, power function, right? Uh, the power, right? The powers, and then uh, another way of expressing this is. Uh, Another way of expressing this is uh, base 10 log, taking log, base 10 log of 10 squared. Okay, uh, base 10 log of, uh, let's do it this way. One hundred base ten log of one hundred, and 
then it is, of course, you know, uh, base 10. It's called base 10 log. You read it as base 10 log of 100 or uh, log of 100 to base 10. It doesn't matter. But, you know, uh, uh, you can read it either way. But base 10 log of, you know, 100 can be rewritten as uh, base 10 uh, log of 10 squared. But now let's think about it. That means if you can write it like that, that means, you know, what, 10 10 is 10 to itself, 10 to 1, right? So uh, base 10 log of 10, this thing is 1, right? In other words, you know, this uh, base 10, base 10 log of 10 is 1. In other words, um, uh, it means nothing. I mean, you know, uh, base 10 of 10, base 10 log of 10, <laughs> what else can it be? It will be, it will have to be one, right? And then again, so uh, when the base is, when the base is, you know, uh, when the base and this is the same thing, right? Um, it is one, and then uh, another another thing. Um, when it is like this, uh, you can you can move that two to the front, just like you know um, why. So it's two log uh, of ten to base ten, and then since. Uh, since log 10 of 10 is 1, it simply becomes 1, right? Uh, it simply becomes 2, right? In other words, what that means is um, this will become 3, base 10 log of 10, this becomes uh, 4, then it's 3, uh, 4 log of 10 becomes 4, right? And then uh, 1 million will be uh, 6 times log of 10 to base 10, which becomes 6. So what does this, you know, uh, uh, what does this mean? Uh, two things we can take away from this. Uh, one, uh, uh, in log, if you express large numbers in log, um, the exponent, so for example, log x to a, of course, you know, that means the base is x2, right? Uh, the base must be also x, log of x to base x to a. Uh, this can be transformed to a times log of x. And uh, for now, just, just you know, uh, let's uh, ignore what the base is. Let's ignore. In other words, um, that's one thing we can take away. But think about it. This is the property, this is the characteristics that we need. Why? Because it's something raised to power and what was in power, fu power function now turns into linear function. It turns into linear function, right? You understand what I'm saying? 
because previously, what was our problem? Our problem was um, if everything can be identified as z equals x times y structure, we can solve for anything. But our problem was what we identified was not this. What we identified was not this. Ah. What we identified was not that, but rather what we identified was like z equals x to the y. Okay? Then, the pro so that was why, you know, we had a problem. But then, uh, because it's not x to the, uh, z equals x times y format, but it's z to the uh, x equals, I mean, z equals x to the y structure. Right? If it is like this, then uh, how we solve for y? The only way we can solve for y is by turning it into log, by changing it into a, um, so in other words, if we take the log, right? But if you, uh, on the, uh, if you take the, if you take the log, it's going to be y times log of x. But Remember, I've been telling you over and over, we're dealing with an equation. Equation means, you know, uh, um, there's an equal sign between the right-hand side and the left-hand side, right? And if you do something to one side, only to one side, then the equal sign can't hold. It won't hold, right? Because it's an equation. It's balanced. Basically, it's balanced out. So... Uh, if you want to uh, 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 take the uh, low to the right-hand side, you need to do the same to the left-hand side, right? So in other words, um, you'll have to do, this is mathematically, I mean, uh, the way it is written, you know, it's not co correct, but, you know, uh, uh, then that means, you know, you will need to also take the log. Ay, 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 ay. You'll need to also take the log to the right, uh, left-hand side, okay? That's the only way that equal sign can hold, right? Without disturbing the equal sign, right? So the same thing, uh, so um, then, you know, to summarize it, uh, we need to turn this into log of z equals y times log of x. But once it is done, once it is done, then solving for y is easy. But how do we solve for y? Now it is z equals x times y format. Isn't that right? Now it is now it is z equals oops. x times y structure, right? Or y times x structure, whatever you call it, because you know, right? Now it's z equals y times x structure. And then we can solve for y. Isn't that right? Therefore, then, you know, uh, to solve for y, then all you need to do is uh, log of z over log of x, right? Okay, uh, there's no reason to put parentheses here, uh, but actually, you know, it's going to be a, you know, uh, there's going to be a parenthesis because it's actually z is f v over p, right? Now, um, yeah, theoretically, I mean, that's the theoretical uh, background, why we have to use log, but then the uh, next question is practical uh, question is, uh, 
so can we take the log of uh, base 10 log of anything? Um, yes, you can take base 10 log of any number, but then it's, it's actually not very uh, easy to uh, figure out what's going to be the exponent. I mean, think about it. Uh, all of these numbers that I, all of the examples that I showed here, uh, they are all powers of 10, right? 10,000, 100,000, you know, 1 million, 10 million, 100 million, 1 billion. They are all powers of 10. Uh, you can easily, easily visualize, and these, you know, uh, exponents can be one through, uh, you know, uh, all integers. But if you, you cannot, uh, what would, if you are trying to take base 10 log of something like 13.768, Well, math theoretically and mathematically, it's it's not impossible. It's possible, but then what's going to be the exponent that would make exactly you know um, uh, what what should be the exponent, right? Ten to what? What is going to be uh, ten to what will be thirteen point seven six eight? I mean that's really difficult, you know. Uh, uh, actually, you know, with computer and calculator, we can do that, but, you know, it's not easy to visualize. Now, the second, uh, so I said previously, there are uh, uh, three types of logs that are commonly used. First one is common log. Second one is binary. Binary uh, log is, you know, uh, with base two. Everything uh, is the power of, you know, uh, uh, based on something like, you know, uh, four, that's two squared, right? Uh, eight, two cubed, 16, two to the fourth, and so on, right? So in this case, you know, the uh, base, uh, you can turn it into a, a Base to log, right? Uh, log, uh, base to log of four, base to log of eight, right? And, um, but you know, again, uh, in computer science, you know, uh, uh, binary, um, binary log would be, uh, uh, would come in quite handy. Um, now the third commonly used log is, you know, uh, uh, natural log. Natural. And natural log uses, you know, uh, E as the base. Uh, natural log uses Euler's number. Base of the natural log is Euler's number, E. It's called also um, exponential function. And to explain this, you know, uh, um, uh, it's going to take, uh, what time? We cannot, it cannot be explained in, you know, uh, five minutes. We only have, you know, five more minutes left. But, you know, um, uh, we'll need to understand that the, uh, it can take um, any number. It can take log of any number. Um, and to understand, so um, natural log is, you know, uh, 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 log to base E, and E is, you know, uh, called, you know, they just, uh, uh, they just call it Euler's number. And Euler was a, uh, uh, German Swiss mathematician in the uh, like 17th century, um, and um, it's not Euler, right? Because you don't have to, you know. I mean, it's it's a proper noun. It's a it's someone's name. You know, you don't. Uh, uh, it's a very bad. Um, uh, it's a very bad habit of you know. Uh, uh, English language or French or, you know, they all, because why? Uh, they always wanted to uh, um, anglicize everything. Uh, for example, you know, uh, um, 
Florence, Milan and Florence, you know, those are the uh, cities in Italy, right? Uh, but in English, they, they, Florence, uh, actually in Italian, it's Firenze, Firenze, and, you know, Milano, Milano. It's not even Milano, it's Milano. They, they pronounce it like the Milano. Um, Uh, whatever is, you know, uh, these days, you know, I, I don't know, you know, uh, in, in like uh, 10th century, I mean, that's during the Middle Ages, and you know, travel, you know, international travel wasn't uh, uh, common. And, you know, uh, uh, know uh, knowing of foreign language, knowledge of foreign language is very limited. So, yeah, it's understandable. But these days, even these days, you know, uh, um, If you can't pronounce Firenze just because English is your uh, first language, well, then something's not right. Something's wrong. I mean, is it so difficult? I mean, you can pronounce pizza. If you can pronounce pizza, why can't you uh, pronounce Firenze, right? Um, or Milano, right? Um, so if you forcefully anglicize the names like, you know, uh, uh, proper nouns like Euler, uh, it's German name, so Euler. What's wrong with that? Uh, it's only uh, in, you know, you're respecting his, you know, uh, uh, this guy's, you know, uh, heritage, then, you know, uh, uh, it's only right to uh, call his name, pronounce his name uh, in his own language. Uh, but anyway, um, Euler and Gauss uh, are two uh, in modern math, you know, uh, there is also uh, Lagrange, which is, you know, uh, who, is, uh, who was a French mathematician, very great mathematician, you know, Bachelier uh, is, you know, Middle Ages, you know, from medieval times, but, you know, Bachelier was French, you know, uh, mathematician. They were all, they were generally all, you know, uh, Lagrange was, uh, I, I know Bachelier was a, uh, a monk, and in those days, you know, uh, only the monks were the uh, 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 the educated, I mean, <laughs> uh, most aristocrats were thugs, right? Because they were knights. Knights were basically, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, this basically romanticized, you know, as knights were knights in shining armor. But knights were basically thugs, you know, they were uh, uh, mercenaries. Um, So monks were, you know, the only ones who were, like, you know, uh, not only literate, but they were the ones doing the research, I mean, the studying. You know. uh, Bachelier in the Middle Ages and Lagrange, I, I believe Lagrange was a, uh, an aristocrat. Uh, Gauss and Euler were, uh, Lagrange, Ga Gauss and Euler were um, three, you know, um, uh, modern mathematicians that really made a great, great impact to uh, uh, math. And Gauss was also, uh, Gauss was a German, uh, I think Gauss was also uh, German Swiss, Swiss German Gauss. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, I, I hope you wouldn't anglicize his name as Gauss, right? That's really, that's awkward, very awkward. So Euler discovered this number, uh, and this is a, uh, they don't, they have a name, you know, they don't call it by, uh, just like pi, the reason they have a name is because it's an irrational number. Irrational number means it goes on forever, right? Uh, the decimal parts do not repeat, right? If they repeat, you know, uh, at some point you can stop, but you know, it doesn't repeat, it goes on forever. So uh, we don't actually write out that number, we just use it as, you know, E, Euler's number. And it's the basis uh, for exponential function. And another way to write natural law is this. And of course, that's quite natural, you know, we know why it is ln. Oh, that's natural law. Right? And of course, you know, 
in French, you know, uh, it would be uh, log naturel, so, you know, ln. Um, but, you know, with natural log, you can take log of any number. You don't have, you know, any limitations in the choice of the numbers you can take log of. So uh, to understand this, um, uh, we need another uh, hour. I said, you know, there were two things, two takeaways from uh, law. One is, you know, this, I explained it already in, in my main lecture, but, you know, uh, since we are out of time, uh, I'm going to talk about it uh, in the next class. All right. So uh, uh, any questions so far? Any questions? Questions? All right. If you don't have any questions, uh, I'll have to call it a day. Have a great uh, afternoon, everyone. And I will see you next Monday. Uh, and next Monday we'll meet. Uh, all righty. Take care, Cedric. Uh, we'll, I'll see you in uh, F707 next Monday. Okay. All right. Uh, stop recording. And.